What's up, everyone? Welcome to the podcast. I almost said welcome to the Patreon. <laughs> welcome to the podcast. The show Dana Katie to talk about all the progress things in life, like music, content creation, and video games. I'm one of your co-hosts, Juicy Kazoom. And I am all fucked up. Bro. Uh, for every, not, not just Glebo, which I'll get to, but dude, like the calendar for the last week has oh. been... My wife, my wife, my wife. Went, uh, <laughs> in, it went 45 seconds in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, she went on a trip earlier this week, and her being gone, that is like my metric for a calendar Bro. week. Because Saturday's no different than Wednesday for me as yeah. a degenerate streamer, yeah. right? So when she's gone... um. To me, it's like time is just a construct. Yeah, time is a exactly. So, and I knew I had to pick her up, but I had to pick her up on Monday. And for some reason, I thought it was Sunday. <laughs> so it was like two in the afternoon and, and I'm driving my wife home from the airport <laughs> and I'm like, what day is it? <laughs> it's like Monday. And I'm like, oh, no, I opened up fucking discord to see the every single like Monday morning and Thursday afternoon yeah, yeah. morning, it's always we good for nine thirty tomorrow, yep. or are we good for six, you know, thirty tonight. And it was like five hours later, and I was just like, "Oh no!" I just pictured you still sitting there in front of your computer, <laughs> yeah, just with the call open, the video with the call, call open, open. waiting. And I, I, I apologize. Oh, I'm man. sorry, dude. I just like it happens. We've all been there. I totally get that. Like, I have my brain has subconsciously relegated, yeah, like time and space. To like my wife's existence, I would have no idea what what day it is without her. Yeah, yeah. So sorry about that. We missed the Patreon episode. We'll make it up to you somehow. Yeah, somehow at some point. Feet pics on the Discord or something. <laughs> um, but but in that time <clears throat> that she was gone, I assumed there was some degenerate. Thirteen hour days. Factorio been, grinding. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still I'm still deep into Factorio. I have such a love hate relationship. The game's fucking incredible. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Like I already have like three hundred hours. It's the um Dark Souls of uh, Factory games. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> it, it it has officially surpassed Satisfactory. I don't know if I said that. Or yeah. Not, I think. Last week we were talking a bit um, about that. <clears throat> and I I've uh, delved deeper into the uh, the DLC, the space DLC. Yeah, is Gleba the planet you're on? Gleba is the planet. Okay. Yeah. So you had just made it so, to space last time we talked. Yeah. So there are three. I've been to three planets. There's a fourth planet, and then a place that is like on the map where a planet would be that just says like outer solar system, and then like way out is like it says shattered planet and it just shows what like alderaan looked like after yeah, the death star yeah. hit it it was it just like and so i imagine it's like fucking impossible to get out there i have no idea what's there i'm i don't want to be spoiled yeah, i'm looking yeah. forward to it um but oh shoot. i will say the three planets dude they're geniuses what they did oh the devs just absolute genius is the way that they did this it's like this is another one of those things that stop me if I've said this last week or if okay. I've just been repeating myself on stream, I can never remember. Um, but one of the reasons why one of my favorite games of all time, The Witness. Oh, yeah. Games that great... aren't games. Yeah. Or the games that aren't the game you thought they were. Well, not that. Okay. Not that. One of the reasons why it's such an incredible game, especially an incredible puzzle puzzle game, okay, is because it introduces a mechanic. And Inscription yeah, is another yeah, one of those yeah, games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Introduces a mechanic, and then it builds upon that. Yeah. Very logically, to where it's like, okay, I understand that. Yeah. I understand just so that. So organically, so you don't have to read like eighty pages of a wiki to understand how to just solve this puzzle. Yeah, and then it tweaks that mechanic yeah. just a little bit. Yeah. You know, like, so with The Witness, right, you start off by, like, you walk up to a panel, and there's just, like, a dot yeah. that you click, and you just slide across a thing, and it's, like, the door Solved. opens. Yeah. And then, like, later on, you end up looking at a panel, and the, there's just a grid of dots. Yeah. And normally, it's, like, partitioned off, so you have to, like, solve the maze. But in this case, there's nothing there except 
the tree behind it is casting shadows with the branches. Oh. So the branches are the walls that you have to then navigate. So it's like, oh my God, shadows. And then later it's colors and then there's yep. shapes and then there's, and it just tweaks and adds a little bit to it yep. and makes it more interesting every time. And then takes all of the individual puzzle pieces and starts putting them together. Yep. Oh, this one has shadows and shapes and, yep. you know, whatever, right? So in Factorio, you learn, you know, the first thing is like, I'm hand mining fucking yep. iron, right? And then eventually you get to like automation. Yes. To, to where everything is automatic. All the like drones and stuff. All the drones, all the like all of my production is all set up to manufacture like rockets and the rockets get payloads put into them. Those payloads are dynamically requested from ships that are coming from other planets. And that's an iteration of just trains and train stations. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's the same interface. It's the same thing. The 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 ships are just trains between planets. Yep. You know, so it's like, um, but they do a clever thing where you get on the ship after you've sent everything yeah. up and whatever, but you have to leave everything behind except what you can fit in the ship. Oh. So you don't get to take, so like, to really a whole... To some extent, you're starting over. Yeah, so... And each planet has its own unique set of challenges and yeah. mechanics and science tree. So the first planet I went to um, is called... I'm definitely not pulling up the game to look at it. Fulgora. Fulgora. Classic. So, and it's... There's no enemies on it. It's, nice. Uh, there's kind of like this dark meme that it's Earth in the future because it's effectively it's like all it is is there's just like these island islands, and in between the islands is heavy oil. The <laughs> oceans are just oil, just crude oil. It's just oil, and um, but you can like walk on it. It's like sludge, kind of thick, um, but you can't build on it. Yeah. So there's like these little islands um, and there's constant. Well, there's a day night cycle that's pretty quick, but at night it's just lightning storm. Oh. And if you get hit by lightning like twice, you're dead. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So there's lightning rods, which are something you learn how to craft pretty quickly. So the lightning rods take the lightning, but also collect energy. Collect energy. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So you're not making, um, you're not like, uh, have boilers that have fuel that are pumping steam engines that are generate a power grid. It's like you have to collect it at night, charge batteries, uh -huh. and that has to sustain yeah. you through the day. Um, so it's like some so, tweak to the like core loop you just learned on the previous planet. And that's planet. like 1% of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because so then you have the challenge of there's islands that you can't really build between initially. So you can't like connect power lines. So you need like a grid of batteries and lightning rods over here and over here and over here. And there's one resource on the planet other than the oil. And it's scrap. Mm, very Wally-esque. So yeah. So <laughs> on the, the first planet, Novice, you start by like, you know, iron and copper. Mm -hmm. Iron and copper... You know, you turn into the plates and you can turn into yeah. like rods and wire and in different combinations, those get added together to make like a green circuit. Yeah. Now you need like a ton of green circuits and copper wires yeah. to make a red circuit. But you it but it's like, you know, like 10 to 1 or something yeah. is the ratio. And then to make blue circuits, you need like and I and I'm gonna get the, the recipes wrong yeah. off the top of my head, but it's like uh, oh, actually, for the previous one, you need plastic, and plastic is like a an oil. Yeah, derivative. yeah. So you need to have crude oil that you're pumping, usually from really far away, refining it, which is like this mega fucking complicated process. Yeah. Of all these inputs, outputs, and ratios. Um. So basically, you're building up, right? You take a scrap, and on this planet, you one of the first things you unlock is a recycler, and what the recycler does is it's the first thing that takes rather than like if you picture a an item tree right uh -huh. these two things 
go together to make this yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What the recycler does is it takes this and it gives you Breaks 25 percent uh, of the two things. Okay, okay, okay. So now, but so the scrap you put the scrap in and it's you get one of 12 items. There's like a 1% oh, chance shoot. of this, a 2% chance of this, a 10% chance of this. And it's like, you can get low density structures, which are like end game, yeah. not end game, but late game, yeah, like yeah. mega high up in the tree that you just get, you're just mining yeah. high tier shit. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, it's like very, very difficult to get like iron ore. Um, so it's it totally yeah. flips it upside down yeah. to where now it's a top down approach. You're breaking shit down and working that way. Yeah. Which means which also means that like that planet can much easier it has a much easier time specializing in like, oh well, I'm gonna start producing yeah. like blue circuits because I'm you shitting like, them out. Yeah, you look at your entire kind of like plan a different way now because before you had to build on everything to get x but now you're just getting x so you might do everything in a different order because you have access to something that you had to grind to get access to yeah and now it's like i literally it, it got to the point where i have like 180,000 blue circuits that on the main planet i'm like i need like 50 and i can't like <laughs> yeah yeah i'm struggling because i ran out of oil and whatever and i have 180,000 and i'm just throwing them in the trash can yeah 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 what you can do is i i had this elaborate chain where you throw a blue circuit into the recycler and you get like seven green circuits and a red circuit yeah take the green circuits throw it into the recycler and you get like you know copper and and it literally just breaking it down so there's like 27 chained recyclers yeah and at the end, there's two recyclers where their inputs are pointed into the outputs, which just deletes the items, right? It's like, yeah, because you you end up with 25% of the original thing. Yeah. So if you put in a hundred iron plate, which is like the basic, yeah, the most you get 25 back and then you get four back and then you get one back and then you get zero. And then it's, yeah. So I have, I'm just throwing shit away because I'm running out of room and yeah. I really only need these three things, but it comes with 8 billion like ice. You know, that's but clever I to like not only just like change the way you do it, but do it in a way where like that's such a, a, an interesting thing where like this resource that was so scarce. Now it's like even though it's a problem, yeah, it's a have. problem. And like they know that emotionally it's hard for you to throw away blue circuits because of how hard you grinded for them. So it's just like a, a clever little like funny thing to make that the problem now that you have too many but so far away from where you need them <laughs> and yeah and then you struggle for so long with these things just to unlock a thing that made half of your problems irrelevant yeah you know um so so <laughs> that that was the first planet yeah the next planet i went to is volcanus oh yeah now volcanus is like uh it's literally just like black lava stone with like lava pits. Yeah. Except when you look in the map, you have the starter area. Mm -hmm. And then around it is a big red line with these like zoned off red sections with like red like warning lines. Which of course you're and like, you, well, what the hell's out there? <laughs> yeah. So if you build in those areas, you go in those areas at all. There are l giant lava dune worms that just Shai Halud? Bore, they just eat everything, devour everything, and they have like, dude, like the big the big biters, like the big bugs, you know, have like three thousand health or whatever. Um, and they're like very hard to take care of un yeah. unless until you have like artillery and shit, yeah, like tanks with like nukes and stuff, yeah. right? The small worm has 30,000 <laughs> HP per segment. So it's just like. So like uh, it took me a couple of days to get. I had to build uranium shells for my tank. And it took 18 to kill a small worm. <laughs> And there's like, you know, gargantuan worms or whatever that are just like, you know, a million health or whatever. I mean, there's just like, 
So you, in order to use the resources in that area, you need to kill the worm. But once you kill the, there's one worm per area. And then all of a sudden, uh, when you kill that worm, the whole area opens up and now you can mine the resources gotcha. there. You start off with like one patch of the resource that's like a new resource. It's like tungsten. Well, now you can, you know. Yep. But so the cool part about this planet is the mechanic there is you end up being able to build these foundries. So you're smelting everything like on a totally different level, all from lava. So you uh, use this offshore pump, just like you use for water, the lava and the lava turns into liquid iron and or liquid copper, molten. And then you're basically 3D printing shit. Yeah. So now the resources, you don't have to mine them and then refine them. You basically are, it, it feels like 3D printing. So now you're able to produce like, giga quantities where like on on novice i needed like a fucking 200 um uh like oven grid okay just to make iron and then a 200 grid you know it's massive yeah thing, yeah you know just so that i can output like enough iron to do whatever in this instance like two foundries will just like <laughs> shit out tons of these raw resources yeah um so that's a really interesting mechanic now gleba this will be the last thing where I, you are I, now I, I gleba is where i am and it's a fucking swampy wasteland okay it's <laughs> shrek spiders dude the spiders are the least bad part okay and they're pretty shitty <laughs> everything on the planet that's relevant has a fucking spoilage timer. Oh, that's the freshness thing. Yeah, you were showing me that. So you'll like pick up this, like, um, the fuck is it called? Uh, ya, ya maca your mama fruit, your mama fruit. Mm -hmm. Um, what's it? Is it y it's like your maca fruit, you mako fruit, and jelly nut. <laughs> Okay, so it's like, and these only grow in specific like areas uh -huh. on the map. There's like this green area and these purple area that are like really hard to discern. And now it's not just like dirt and grass. It's like literally if I hover over like one thing, it's olive blubber lichen. And then the next tile over is green marsh. The next tile is blue marsh. The next tile is water. Oh, that's water cane. It's like, it's just... I don't know what any of this shit is, yeah. and it's you can't build on it until you landfill it in. Um, but so like one of these fruit, they last like fucking well. The fruit lasts an hour. Um, but a ton of the other things they spoil in like two three minutes. That's crazy. So and when they spoil, they turn into spoilage. It's just Garbage, garbage right now here's the problem you spend your entire existence in this game 95 percent of, of the time is this belt is for iron oh. iron goes on this belt every input into an assembler it's like it knows this is iron it's going to be iron forever every now and then you might have two things on a belt and you might have a splitter with some logic saying, make the make the iron go this way and the copper go that way. Yeah. But in this case, you have you're you're using a resource that at any point in the process can turn into a different object. Yep. That then can't be used as a recipe. It can spoil while it's in being used which That's renders it crazy so the machine just like clogs effectively right because it's like i have a recipe that takes an a and takes a b and all of a sudden there's a c in here yeah and the objects just don't pop out so you need you need to either take them out manually or have like an insert or pull it out so every step of the way your containers your inserters the machines you now have to handle dynamically changing objects yeah yep, yep. which is like a whole other fucking set of concerns now uh, this all you're doing this whole time in the whole game basically is you're generating science 
there's like it's like okay. red juice blue juice green juice they're just these little bottles and they're different kinds of science, science. there's like eight science and when you use the science that's uh, you put them into these labs and that's what makes the progress bar move okay. along that's what lets you progress down the tree okay. the science tree to unlock shit when you go to different planets each planet has their own science so now you have to mm. harvest that science yep. in a very particular way you can only do there and then bring the science up to a ship ferry the, the science back home combine that science with the 20 sciences you have on home put them in the lab and then now you're progressing the tree more gotcha well the science spoils on gleba you can't just i've got like thirty thousand pink science from the other place that i can just chill right but the green science you only got 40 minutes Otherwise, it becomes spoilage. So now it's going to fuck up your whole Damn. production into planetary production line. Okay. But the recipe takes spider eggs. <laughs> and when the spider eggs spoil, they hatch. <gasps> so your nah, machine nah, can nah, just... Nah, 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 nah. Your, your fucking nah. machine could just blah, spit nah. out spiders, dude. Nah. Gleba sucks. The whole Gleba. place is <laughs> fucking cancer that's awful mm -mm, mm -mm. and and dude it's i've made like almost no progress mm -mm. because in order to do anything you need to like use this fruit there's these two fruit there's the fruit and the nut okay <laughs> the jelly nut makes jelly the fruit makes this mash okay they both spoil in fucking like two minutes but if you combine them together you make something called, I think, bioflux. Okay. Which is like the basis for a ton of um, recipes. And it lasts like hours. Okay. Like like two hours or something, which is like, oh my God, thank you. Two hours, <laughs> you know? Um, But if you want to take the fruit yep. and turn it into the mash or the nut into the jelly, <laughs> you need nutrients you get nutrients by either taking those things or spoilage and putting them into this machine the special machine okay. you make on gleba yeah that then generates nutrients the machine in order to generate nutrients the machine's fuel is nutrients so of half course. of your output is in your input Dude, it's like it sounds like a nightmare I literally, I, I had to draw a fucking, like, tree. <laughs> a gleba map. Like, this requires this, which requires this, which requires this, which requires itself, oh, which spoils. Oh, my God. And I'm going crazy, and dude. spiders erupt out of your machines. No. Yeah, and remember how last week I turned it on uh, passive oh, mode? Oh, yeah. Zone? Well, the moment I get on, I, I was really torn I'm like, I want to go to Gleba, and I know that there's enemies there, and I don't want to, like, miss the experience. Yeah. So what I was going to do was, I was like, all right, I'm going to turn it back off passive, but in order to do that, I need to, like, shore up my defenses on Homeland. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. And when, the problem is, is that when I pull up the map for Homeland, normally what happens is the biter nests are, like, usually right on the perimeter of the, like, pollution yep. cloud. Yeah. And as soon as the pollution cloud hits them, they're like, they fuck you, crazy. and they come yeah. in. Well, when I pull up the map yesterday, the pollution cloud was about yay outside of where there was uh, 200 fucking nests. And I'm like, oh, so I have to destroy all these nests and also would have to put up walls and turrets. And you have to automate all of that to make sure that you're manufacturing the ammo yeah. and getting the ammo to all these places. Yeah. I'm like... Yeah, I'm past the point of no return. I cannot turn it back on. I just can't. I'd spend all the next week. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I just want to kind of play the game. So yeah. I decided, okay, I'm just going to keep it on passive mode. Oh, well, you know, at least on passive mode, when you shoot the enemies, they f they'll they get mad and they'll fight back. Oh, okay, okay. So it's like, it'll, it'll be on my terms, but at least there'll still be combat. Yeah. Well, the first thing I get on Gleba, I run about 25 feet and fucking spiders are coming at me. And I'm like, what? And then I go back through the console commands and I see the console command I used was um, game.player.service.peaceful underscore mode. 
uh equals true. Uh-huh. Now what that did is that made turn peaceful mode on. And then but all of the enemies that had already spawned, they when you spawn, that's when the decision is made. Uh... So there's eight million bugs that are still not peaceful. So I needed to enemy kill all units. So that would kill off everything. And now yeah. it's peaceful mode. Everything that spawns, you can just walk right up to them and it's fine. Yeah. The moment you shoot one of them, they're like, ah, yeah. they get pissed. But if you look at the command, it's game.player.surface. Oh, so just that planet. Just that planet. Ah. So then I was like, you know, I'm a programmer. I'm like, wait, can I print out game.player.surface? And it was like, you know, novice. I'm like, oh, so every other planet. So I didn't have to actually. Yeah, that, that how pissed would you have been if you had done all that and then been like, oh, I could have just gone to, to the planet and it would have been ex the exact experience I wanted. Yeah. Oh, so shoot. But but yeah, dude. So it's, Glebus it's, kicking your ass. Yeah, I think I'm I'm just starting to get a little bit of the hang of yeah, it, yeah. but I I'm not using like there's no conveyor belts. Everything is done with which a which a new meta that I learned from the lightning planet. Yeah. Because there's not enough room for like conveyor belts really for so what I have is like 3000 logistics bots. Yeah, okay. In a network, there's these robo ports put in like a grid all over the place. And in this giant logistics network, if you say there are there are two kinds of chests that are really relevant. You, you know, you, know, you can have like a wooden chest or a steel chest. Yeah. But then later on, there's logistics chests that are different colors. You can have a requester chest and a um, something called a uh, a passive provider chest. So basically, it'll hold on to things, and, and and they'll be available to the entire network if someone needs it. Gotcha. Okay. So when I now, what I learned on this other planet was I make an assembler. Before there used to be conveyor belts and lines yeah, of assemblers. Yeah. Now it's like there are these little mini factories where it's yeah. an assembler, an inserter going in, an inserter going out, and then there's the red box and the blue box. Yeah. And it's really cool. You can actually like shift right click on the assembler and shift left click on the box and it will automatically put as a filter i'm requesting the ingredients for this thing Ah, uh, okay so now all of a sudden in the right proportions too so now all of a sudden it's like okay you want a hundred copper wire and whatever so now all the bots they basically go is there anything requesting anything anywhere oh yeah this chest needs copper and it goes so anywhere that has copper available in one of the provider chests. Yeah, yeah, that's it nice. It goes and gets it and flies it over. So that like basically replaced conveyor belts. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, you can't deal with like thousands. I mean, you can. You actually yeah. can. You yeah. just need lots of logistics bots. It's just a yeah. fucking swarm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so now I have these little units where it's like this thing makes the like fruit mash. And it also needs nutrients. This thing handles spoilage and everything's just like going. And so far, nothing is broken. And I'm sure at some point it's going to fucking break. But now I'm like manufacturing shit. Yeah. I just started to make the green science and the timer's ticking down. I realized like I need to build a rocket platform silo, which takes like three complex yeah. things to fuel the rockets just to export the science i'm like yeah, yeah this yeah. science is going to turn to garbage i'm not going to make any more science and now i need to focus on that but there's still more planets and that's i'm already yeah, thinking about my next playthrough there's more planets even still that's cool i mean that's like that's sick that it it doesn't have to like it's cool that it doesn't have to add like to the end of the train like, you know what I mean? It's like, he, this, these are all the things you had to unlock. Well, here's just like more things that are like bigger and better and more meta. It's it's fun that it basically reroutes you to have to start over and changes things along the way. So it's like, it's almost, maybe not. I mean, it's it's not like a roguelite, but it, it that sense <laughs> of instead of just extending and getting bigger and bigger things, it's you're now having to solve the same problem in a different way. I need copper or I need science or I need whatever. 
But now I have to do that in a completely different way, which just, I don't know, that's cool. And always in the larger context of if I need something from another planet, I can always build a ship, yeah. ferry it over, which has its own logistics Yeah, chain. yeah, yeah, yeah. So now, I literally, while I'm on Gleba, I ran out of crude oil on the home planet. Like, yeah. the oil wells. So it's like... It's like a roguelite where every time you start a new play session, you're still playing your previous playthroughs yeah. at the same time. Yeah, dude. So... So now on one planet with all the 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 oil oceans, yeah, I'm taking that, cracking it down to heavy oil into light oil, cracking that down into petroleum gas, manufacturing barrels, putting the gas <laughs> in the barrels, and in large quantities ferrying the oil back to home planet just so I can make plastic to keep because home now all of a sudden up. the plastic yeah. completely dried up because I have no oil and I'm a solar system away so i can't go and just find another oil thing and set up yeah. a train so i have to do it all remotely with bots so that's the cool part is that like you can still i'm 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 on all planets at all times yeah remotely with yeah, the robot yeah 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 i'm dreaming about the game dude i'm sitting there in bed and i'm thinking my wife's like Ugh, i don't want to do the laundry and i'm like why can't i just have an inserter in the hamper in the bathroom and a conveyor belt into the with an inserter into the washer and then a, a fucking inserter into the dryer. Life would be why so much easier this? if this was Factorio. But but for real though, why are we not doing this in real life? Like oh why do God. I have to bro. bring the laundry and bro, and you're about to you know potentially build a house? Were you talking about that? You gotta go full factorio mode on it, brother. Go crazy with it. Man, my grandma was really onto something with the, the laundry chute. Yeah, 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 did yeah. Did you ever did you ever experience one of those? Uh-huh. Yeah. I used to go down fucking face first the laundry chute. <laughs> which was like looking at it now, I don't know how I didn't die. Yeah. 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 But that's amazing. That's amazing. Anyway. And so this is still the same playthrough. As last week, you've just made it to this is your third planet or fourth if you count novice or whatever. Yep, and I'm ready. To, that's I'm, a lot I'm, of game because you're playing a lot. Like that's I'm a lot playing, of game. I'm playing ten to fourteen hours a day, every day, all day. Yeah, that's crazy. There's not enough time, and the time gets deleted, dude. I wake up at eight. I start playing. It's like midnight, and I. I blinked. That's <laughs> that is crazy. That is crazy, yeah. dude. Damn. Well, that's cool, man. That's freaking cool. Well, I love to hear it. That's a uh, that game sounds deep. I popped in. I think Co Carnage was playing it the other day. Right. And uh, yeah, I like popped in and I saw him like build something and then like 40 bajillion drones just like <laughs> and I was like, I kind of knew from us talking. I was like, oh, they're all filling up his inventory. He has it set. So there's a threshold for everything. And just as he was building all this like army of drones were coming to refill. And I was like, oh, damn. And he was yeah, he was building it. some. I don't know what you can like blueprint stuff so you can take items that you don't even have yet and like stamp it down. And it's just like a ghost. And you can like oh. literally control C, control V, like copy and then put it in like a blueprint book. So then you can basically make like a tile thing. So you go. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Just, and just starts building it and building it and building it or later on. So like I could set up something to be built, set up these machines with going in and out of these chests. Right. And then walk away and then come back like two or three hours later and Every time it's like done making one, a bot will come over, boop, put it over, and they'll just slowly assemble yeah, everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's really fucking cool. It's genius. And the last thing I'll say is there's something that I have like dipped my toe into, dipped my toes into, and it's called circuits. This is like the Minecraft Redstone. Oh, yeah. You can connect pretty much everything with everything else over like the power lines and send 
signals. So like the most basic thing you can do is you can connect the assembler with the chest it's outputting to. And you can say when the contents uh, of the chest are, you know, greater than or equal to 50, stop working. Yeah. But you can also, there's what's called combinators. There's a constant combinator. There's, uh, um, Fuck, I don't even remember uh, what all of them are. There's a decider combinator, selector combinator, um, arithmetic <laughs> combinator. And all of these things take the signals and can do things with them. So what you can do is you can take, let's just say the chest is sending the signal mm -hmm. of its quantity, right? Let's just say 50. Um. And let's say you're making something else over here that is going to use that resource. Yeah. This is going to be a bad example, but it'll just give you an idea. Yeah. Now, you know, when you create this other thing, it takes for every one of item A, it takes three of item B. Yeah. So then what you can do is you can take the um, arithmetic combinator, like um, uh -huh. arithmetic, yep. basically, and say... Take the value I'm getting from this chest and multiply it by three. Okay. And then output that signal to this other thing. And that other thing can say, what am I getting in? I'm going to make this many of this other thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you can but basically you bake in all of the math you're, you've been doing in your notebook. You can like bake into the signals and just have everything do the mother flipping <laughs> trigonometry calculus. In in inside itself, yeah, yeah, and you can make like basically all of Boolean logic. You can do gates and and or not, you know, whatever. You can do timers, um, you know, like when you get into doing like nuclear energy, that's one of those things yeah. where once you put in like a nuclear fuel cell, it just starts burning, and there's no way to stop the process. Mm. It just goes. Yeah. Um. But. But if like you're not using the energy, if nothing's plugged in, it still is yeah yeah burning. So what you can do is you can basically like say how much energy is stored in batteries, how much energy am I consuming? Do you can do all kinds of math yeah. and ratios to figure out like oh I shouldn't run this anymore. I should turn it off. I should start. So you can do crazy complicated things and say in, in this very specific situation with these ratios of items i want to send a signal to bring this this particular train to go pick up this particular item from this particular station and bring it to this particular station and deliver it it's crazy dude that's and i haven't even like touched that yet that's insane yeah dude that's crazy this is the one I get this in satisfactory mixed up. Maybe they both. This one was like in development. This one's been in development like forever, right? Like this one, 2.0 like is what something. recently came out. Not 1.0. Satisfactory 1.0 came out, but this yep. has like been a thing. Yeah, okay. I mean, I guess that makes sense with how complex it is. That's crazy, dude. Yeah, so the depth is just infinite. Yeah, people make, people make self-growing bases. I saw this video. There's this guy that I, I've only seen a couple of his videos, and he, the base is he's got m millions of subscribers. And uh, yeah, he, yeah, he, he's like kind of a memester. His name's Dosh Doshington, I think. Um, he, if the thumbnail was like in search of a flat, flat factorio. That's like funny. in search yeah. of a flat earth. Yeah, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. Like one of the videos. Um, he g went to the end of. The game the the earth yeah the factorio because there's a limit okay um, but it's so far away that like you wouldn't want to go there yourself first of all second of all but you couldn't just like on a normal world get in like a car and start driving because there's trees yeah yeah there's alien nests there's cliffs there's all this stuff so what basically he ended up building inside of this giant spider mech that you get yeah um 
you can put inside of that like logistics networks oh and have my. it do its own thing. So what he what it did is he basically like had these trains that would go and drive in, set up this logistics network with bots, build all this stuff, expand, fill in water, blow up cliffs, do all this stuff. And then it would just send signals back. And he had all kinds of like logic memory registers to figure out the state and the numbers of things to dynamically send. And he would just send the train up and then another train and then another train automatically in the background it would just be running while he'd be doing other shit slowly getting to the end um, that's insane yeah it's next level shit dude they they the, the the developers are were geniuses what they did here that's out of control yeah oh man damn not, so yeah enough of, enough of that i do i freaking love it that's insane <laughs> that is crazy um, we, uh, there's been quite a few, like, kind of gaming things to talk about outside of that, a little bit of Tarkov, but before we hop into that, I do want to take a quick second and thank the first sponsor of this episode, and that is MeUndies. Lounge season is officially upon us. Your favorite, MeUndies, your favorite company that makes the most comfortable underwear in the world, also makes the coziest loungewear that's perfect for this holiday season. You know them, you love them, MeUndies. They sent us a bunch of pair of underwear and it freaking changed my life. I'm just like begging. I'm hoping my wife does laundry like every like two or three days because I only have a few pair. They're just like the the greatest, the greatest underwear yeah. in the world. Meg, Meg's uh, just just started like last week. Just started rocking my fucking, uh, I got the the like long briefs. Oh, She's yeah. Like, These are really comfortable. I'm like, fuck. Yes, they so are. So now she's rocking those. They're so comfortable. The the designs are incredible. Yeah. I just got uh I just got these little cat crazy little cat ones <laughs> that of course, crazy of, course cats. Get, yeah. of course I would get. Yeah. Of course I would get those. Um they've got like branded ones like Beetlejuice. Um they've got, you know, solid colors if you you know just want to go classics every now and then I'll of course. I'll I'll just rock the nice, you know, solid color stuff, but uh but yeah, the designs are are awesome. They're they're like sweatpants. Yeah. Um their joggers and everything are so comfortable. Um I've just never had a bad experience with this brand that yeah. I've been wearing their stuff almost every single day for like 6 years now. <laughs> no, 100%. They uh the, everything is so soft. Like almost like comically soft, like uncomfortable, <laughs> like it's crazy. And uh, yeah, the underwear, obviously insane. That's what they're they're known for. But uh, like I said, now that it's uh, it's cooling down, they make everything. Joggers, lounge pants. They got like hoodies. They got full blown pajamas. I saw the like super flannel pajama top and bottom. And I was like, yo, I need that. Uh, they got everything and it's all, uh, yeah, sweatpants. It's all so comfortable and it fits really well and it's got a good like weight to it as well it's, it's not like uh, oftentimes soft things are like too thin like that's how they get it's almost like i don't know how that works but and then you wear it a few right. times you wash it a few times and it's just like see-through and you can tell it's like they got a good weight they got a good softness they got good construction they feel great so uh like he said, there's a cut for everything. There's 10 different styles of the underwear, over 100 different colors and prints. They're literally all over the place. Versatile loungewears. It's not just about underwear, joggers, hoodies, onesies, all sorts of stuff like that. Comfortable, responsibly sourced. Uh, and if you're not happy with your first pair, it is on MeUndies. So you can kick off lounge season with MeUndies and get 20% off your first order, plus free shipping at MeUndies.com slash podcast and enter promo code Podcast. That is meundies.com slash podcast code podcast for 20% off plus free shipping. Meundies comfort from the outside in. Bam. Um so uh so yeah, I've been just freaking playing Tarkov. Although there have been there's quite a few other games. Like these next few weeks are gonna get crazy. I'm actually really excited, but Dude, I know last week I was telling you a little bit about how just like this, this, um, wipe has just felt like the most like buggy and the most like, you know, they release two quests and then, you know, people's, you know, rep is rolling back. Like just like random stuff yeah. like that. It hit me. It's so funny in the patch, they released the arena patch and the arena patch was 
part of the patch notes were fixing the bug where the quests, like you in Tarkov, you get a quest from Ref, and it's like win a ranked match of Arena. So then you have to go mm -hmm. to Arena and you win that, and then you go back to Tarkov and you turn that quest in. That's for Ref. Even if you don't have Arena. Yeah, you can only progress Ref after a certain point if you have <laughs> Arena. You can progress them a little bit without Arena, but after a certain point. But those quests were like bugs. So they were like fixing, like they've been bugged for like two months. And so on the patch notes was like fixing the sync between those things. And so a bunch of people have been playing Arena, but the bug that finally hit me, like nobody knows exactly how it is. This is all kind of back of the napkin math, but but that's because that's all we have. But like the, 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 what people are thinking is if you died in your last Tarkov raid before you go open Arena, it'll bug out your quest. So I like played arena to check out the new game mode. I was like, this is sick. Next day I opened up Tarkov again and genuinely probably 30 quests I had already completed rolled back and quests I had completed months ago. No. Yeah. Like I was on like Punisher part three, which I do like week two of the wipe normally. And it rolled me back to Punisher part three. Now I don't care because a, it was a good rollback in the sense that, like, if Punisher, this is made up, but if Punisher Part 6 unlocks the purchase of the U-Lock, it rolled me back to Punisher Part 3, but I still could buy the U-Lock from Ragman. It was like all the, like, the progression-based rewards were still mm -hmm. there, and I'm not going for Kappa, so I was like, I'm not doing any of this again. Like, screw that, you know what I mean? But it rolled me back, and it still hasn't fixed. What was nice, though, was that you get all the rewards again, so like one of them is Perfect Mediator, which is the one where you get max level of traders with everybody and you get a thick weapon case. I got my thick weapons case a month and a half ago and I just logged on and it was like Perfect Mediator complete. So I completed it and got another thick weapons case. <laughs> like it's so buggy. But a lot of people that were like going for Kappa, like had like 20 quests reset. It's like, it's so weird. Lightkeeper. Oh yeah. Lightkeeper's bug. The Lightkeeper bug right now is if you, nobody that was trying to progress Lightkeeper could um get another quest from him and people have reverse engine oh yeah because don't don't you get like isn't the way he works is that like you get one every like day or every yes. five hours almost or every single like one they... of his quests are on a 24-hour timer you have to in order to get the quest you have to run out to him physically on lighthouse and get the quest but people would turn in a quest and 24 hours later they would go to him and he wouldn't like he wouldn't have the quest for him. Like people were hard stuck. And then people reverse engineered that you had to like turn in a quest, stop playing Tarkov, like close the game for a minimum of 10 hours. And when you open the game again, you have to, the first thing you have to do is launch Lighthouse. If you go any other map, it doesn't work. It resets the 10 hour timer. Or if you die, it resets the 10-hour timer. You have to go Lighthouse and make it to him, and he'll have the quest. Any other permutation of Tarkov resets the 10-hour timer. Now, that's not supposed to be there. It's normally just a 24-hour timer between quests. But, like, so many people were not able to progress their Lightkeeper, and then just, like, somebody reversed, finally figured it out. And then, like, I've had a bunch of people in chat be like, oh, that finally worked. Like, I just... I. Turned my quest in. I alt for the game. I waited 10 hours. I went straight to him and he had it. And so I was like, there's like random stuff like this, bro. Random stuff like this. The one that... What could possibly dude, have Dude, I like... don't know. And that's what's crazy is that none of the bugs are ever things that are addressed in patches. So like they connected Arena to Tarkov again to make the quests. But then opening Arena breaks all your other Tarkov quests, not the arena quests. It breaks the other quests. And then it's like, nothing has changed. There has been no line item in any of the patch notes related to Lightkeeper, but the Lightkeeper quest bug. And like, some people found out today, you know the ex you know the exits that are, you need a Red Rebel and a Paracord? There's like one on reserve, and then they added one on Shoreline yep. and stuff like that. People found out today, Okay, one of the new things that came with this wipe is the mannequins where like it's a hideout thing where oh, you can yeah, upgrade yeah. it. It's a mannequin. You can put a full kit on it and then like swap it, like put it on you in an instant. People found out if on one of your mannequins, you put a red rebel 
and a paracord and a backpack. You don't need either of those things in raid. <laughs> what is the logic they're using? <laughs> I don't know. Like, does that, that, they probably like added flags to some, like your account user object, Dude, like when you I add don't... it to no. the mannequin and then that's what they check and then Holy even that fuck. these things are like not very repeatable like i somebody said that and i was like no way so i put a red rebel and a paracord on my mannequin i went into an offline raid and it worked and i was like what and then later today me and uh and then people in chat were saying like it works people were saying like I, like people i trust were like it's work it works and then, um, and then somebody was like, it, it doesn't work for me. And I was like, oh, I don't know why. So then me and Trey went into an online raid and tried it and it didn't work for us in the same day, but it worked for me in an offline raid and people in chat that I trust, like that I trust were like, I had literally just did it in an online raid. So we're not sure if it's like, dude, it's just. A spaghetti, like it's just crazy. Every day I'm seeing like new bugs that are dude. whack, dude. Speaking of spaghetti, let's just say, okay, let's say you're at Olive Garden. Okay. Okay. Yes. You've got fucking endless unlimited salad, bread breadsticks. Sticks, yeah, whatever. yeah, 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 yeah. You think? You think their the back room storage is infinite? No. So they're lying. It's technically the not bread, unlimited. The bread, there the, is the a bread limit. Sticks, they're not endless. It's they're, crazy because like, when do you think they'd stop you? It's in the fine print, dude. When you've exhausted, I'm picturing like the iron ore patch is 0%. There's no yeah. nothing left. When you've exhausted the like wheat field <laughs> in the back that they like cultivate the breadstick oh, bread from. Man. The... <laughs> But it's but, like when it's so, like when people do unlimited pancakes. Like you just physically can't eat more than like twelve pancakes. Like it just expands in your stomach and goes crazy. So them saying unlimited is like super smart because you just like there's a physical limit. Well, it's like going on to a buffet. pancake consumption and all you can eat yeah. buffet. It's like yeah, how much can you really eat, motherfucker? Yeah. yeah. Um. No, but so it's like going to Olive Garden. Okay. Yeah. You've got your spaghetti. Okay. Yeah. Your nice bowl of spaghetti that it, even like even as tangled as it is, you're happy. The, yeah. The, the sauce yeah, is yeah, good yeah. and everything's great, right? But you ordered you ordered a fucking root beer and they brought you a diet coke and you're like, ugh, gross. Okay. Yeah. So then you're like, can you fucking bring me the right drink? They're like, oh so sorry. <laughs> and then they pick up the for some reason, I don't know, they're a very racistly Italian. <laughs> oh yes, I would have bring you the right drink. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a me. <laughs> you're later. They go out and back, right? And they get you the root beer, and then they bring it back, and oh fuck, spill it all over your spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they broke a thing. They're like, oh, we're gonna fucking fix it. And when they go fix it, they fuck up some other shit, mm -hmm. unrelated. I spilled your root beer all over your your spaghetti. Mm -hmm. Enjoy your meal, mm -hmm. sir. Uh -huh. See you later. And then and then and then the patch comes around, and they say, let me take care of all this for you. I'm gonna make sure you get that root beer. And they bring me a fresh, crisp root beer. But they have to replace my spaghetti because they poured root beer in my spaghetti. And so instead of spaghetti, they bring out a bowl of ranch. And we're just back where we started. They fixed the root beer. The root beer is fine now. But the problem we have now is so much bigger. Where's my spaghetti? This is not my food. That's. And that's the circle is complete and starts again. Something is broken. They try to fix it. They break more things. They go back to the drawing board. They fix the thing they originally needed to fix. But by that time, three other things are happening that are worse. <sighs> it's it's crazy, dude. Um, um, yeah, I, I, I don't envy. I do not envy you, my friend. Um, okay, so there's that one. Uh, so yeah, there's the Red Rebel one. That was crazy. There's the Arena ones. I feel like there were, there were more. It's just crazy. Oh, and by the way, 
it feels like in addition to these like out of pocket left field bugs, right? Like I told you last week about the spawn bug where people are spawning with enemies, right? Like so it's 2018 all over. Again. Yeah, we've had crazy stuff. But like in, in addition to all these out of pocket, it's like go down the list of like memory lane of your like most famously quintessential Tarkov bugs, but that have been fixed for years. They're all coming back. I am not exaggerated exaggerating i think 40 percent of my raids i'm spawning 30 plus seconds late every map everywhere it's crazy that was a thing for so long they find you like look at the timer yeah yeah so, well, and you see it's what like 14 10 or something well, like yeah so it's like a shoreline's a 45 minute raid i'll be in the matching thing right like i'll be like loading raid and then I, it, i'm just in the raid no deployment timer and whenever you deploy into a raid, it shows you your extracts, which also shows you the timer. And so I'll deploy into the raid and it'll say 4430. I'm 30 seconds late, no deployment timer. And just here we are. And like genuinely like 40% of my raids. It's crazy. Wait, so, so there's no <laughs> deployment timer. I wonder if what they're doing, and I might be being generous here, mm -hmm. but like imagine you get into the queue, right? Yeah. You get into the queue, and so so. let's take a step back. Imagine you're player one. Yeah. You're ready, player one. You get into the queue. You're waiting. There's like two or three other people. They're like, fuck, this guy's been waiting. There's not enough people to fill a raid. Yeah. So we're just going to put them together, start the game, let's go. Yeah. The bus, you know, pulls out away. Yeah. And then two people show up. And they're like, hey, I'm here. And they're like, fuck. Yeah. Just get on. Just yeah, get on. Yeah. 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 So I wonder if it could that's be. it or if their algorithm is just fucked and it's supposed to wait and it doesn't get the signal the game has yeah. started until 30 seconds late. And it's like, oh shit. Those, all, all that stuff very well could be. Very well could be. But all I know is that like I'm spawning <laughs> late 40% of my raids. And I tried to give them the benefit of the doubt because back in the day, when you spawned late, it wasn't a guarantee that anybody else spawned late. Most of the time, everybody else spawned on time and you spawned late. And I was like, well, it's been so long since we've had the late spawn bug that maybe this is like a different iteration of it. And in my head, I was like, I wonder if everyone's spawning late. Because if like something's happening with the raid start and everyone spawns 30 seconds late, who cares? Right? Like it's at that point, it's just a 44 and a half minute raid as opposed to a 45. Who, who stays until the last 30 seconds anyway? Yeah, Exactly. And then I had like two or three raids in a day where like I got far and away the closest spawn to just like X door. And there's like two guys inside crouch holding it like like just like so blatantly like, OK, they didn't spawn late. Like there's no way like I just know this map well enough to know they didn't spawn late. So that's out the window. So so I'm not saying when you spawn late, you're the only one that spawned late that raid. But I am saying it's not a guarantee that everybody else spawned late. Yeah. So like that's one, one of the old, one of the old bugs. You remember back when it was like the ghost mag where like you'd be shooting and there'd be blood, but you wouldn't be shooting bullets like that. The, the enemy would be taking no damage, but you'd be like shooting and people call it like the ghost mag or whatever. But I don't remember that, but I do remember this was one of the things I like debunked, I think during my like audio video yeah. where loading, it was like. One it was oh, flechette yeah. maybe in like the revolver shotgun. Yeah, or, yeah. The, basically, the bullets were not. Your loading never made it to the server. Yes, um, yes. I remember that one. I remember that. One. But this is the this is like there was an old bug and it's back. I've seen a few clips. Like I saw a clip of uh, <laughs> Willers. He had an M60, which is the 100 round full auto LMG that shoots like M80. Yeah. And the dude was like standing still looting, and he was like and the guy's running away and Willers is tracking is insane just like blood everywhere and the guy just like ran off and Will was like what the fuck like it's and then I saw a few glorious clips where it was like full ghost mag like just plenty of shots to the head now once again I say ghost mag I'm not saying that I know that the server's not receiving those and like it could be in there could be a million different reasons what I saw happened, but it just looks a lot like the ghost mag bug. Some people have been calling it the ghost mag bug. Yeah, I don't know how you how you determine if it was the ghost mag bug or if it was desync. Like Correct. your bullets, yeah, 
yeah, I don't a, know. a million different ways. But like, <clears throat> basically, it's just been funny to witness. It, it, it's like it's like it's like bug nostalgia. It's like, oh, I haven't been this bug. I haven't been pissed about this in a long time. And then it happens five rains in a row. And you're like, I don't miss this. The next thing that's going to happen, people are going to start using the factory door to glitch under the staircase. Bro, they're going to be invincible. That was crazy. Every single raid on every single map, um, you spawn like 15 seconds into the raid. Like, so you spawn 15 seconds later. For about seven or eight seconds, it's just like three FPS. Everyone. I was playing with uh, Trey and some man today. And I mean, like we would all, it was like in sync. He'd be like, oh, and we'd all be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We would all get it at the same time. You uh, said it was at the beginning? At the beginning. Multiple maps. Like On labs, it was happening. That's when, it, that's when the late spawners are joining. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> but it was happening every raid. Like I wasn't spawning late every raid. That was happening every raid. And on no, I know when you, but you spawned yeah. early. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, spawner. yeah. But then on labs, that was happening like every two minutes. It had to be the raiders. That's what you'd think. Dude. But there were multiple times where we didn't find any raiders until like ten minutes in, and we're like literally three men split up. We're all taking a different section of labs, like clearing it and then looting. Not finding any raiders. Maybe they were spawning in the basement or in sewer. They're spawning out, like outside the wall. Genuinely, maybe. But it would like, it reduces your frames. Like the amount of times today, one of us would swing a guy into a fight and then everyone's at three FPS. And it's just like, and then it just picks up and it's good. And it's like, so it's, it's a, I had fun today. Like genuinely, it was like goofball central me, Trey and some man on labs, like laughing it up, chopping it up. But like, it's a, it's a bad time to be new. Like it's just stuff is it's a weird it's a we're in a weird time. And once again, we you know, towards the end of last week's podcast, we were like, let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say they're doing it on purpose to like identify the root cause of all these bugs and squash them. Maybe I'm not saying anything. I'm not here to say these incompetent, stupid devs. All I'm saying is like you cannot deny if you're playing Tarkov right now. It's a weird time. It's a weird experience. It's just weird, bro. Uh, and then one of the only other Tarkov things is people found people. We'll come back to this, but people found there's an entire new section on woods right now in the game with loot spawning, doors opening. It's a whole new section. It's out of bounds. They removed, you know, like the woods old decrepit brick factory building in that corner. Like you can spawn there and it's also oh, one of the ex extracts. Yeah. That they the wall that was the edge of the map, they removed the wall and they made the map barrier a minefield. And the train tracks that are right there, if you follow the train tracks all the way back, but you would die. But if you did, there's a whole new area. And people found out that if you prone on the train tracks and prone under the train, bless you. Thank you. None of the mines explode. And the boundary sniper can't get you. So you prone all you can prone all the way out there. Now, when I say people found it, undoubtedly a cheater was like Bitcoin over there zoom, and then told his friend and his friend and then people tried and they freaking like you would never find this. Like there's no reason to. Anyways, it's there's a whole new area and like you can go out there and loot it. And so that is like cool from a news perspective. But what I find interesting about that is it's interesting that they're like. Nikita said on the podcast, they're adding in a woods expansion. And so we were like, oh, cool. It's interesting from a game design perspective that it's in the game. Like we haven't had a patch, like a downtime patch in the past few days. Um, it's not accessible. So it's like, I, I was, I've been curious as to like why they'd put it in before. Like, I wonder if they were just like testing its performance hit on the map. But like people are like, the thing now is like people are just farming it like for loot. But I just found that so interesting that it's like a map expansion is live but locked off. I don't know. I mean, that's that's something common in software to merge in code that's orphaned in a yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Like, we added these five new classes in the code. That none of these objects are created, so it's like irrelevant. Yeah. That's the equivalent of adding like a part of a map with like a void space yeah, in I between guess. that yeah. you can't get to. Um 
But yeah, once again, like maybe, it, it, maybe they haven't finished the quests or like there's an event that they're going to yeah. do that will unlock it. And they wanted it ahead of time so that they could just do effectively like server side change yeah, without needing a client update. I don't know. I would have imagined, though, in my brain that they would have done that, but left the physical wall up and then they can just take that away. You know what I mean? It's just it was so interesting that they. But anyways, the long and short it of it still is involves a client update. OK, fair. The long and short of it is it's a new area and it's there and people got to it and the farm in it. And then I saw a screenshot flew by today. I think when you get in the BTR and take it places, you can like ask the BTR <laughs> driver for like news. You can just be like, yo, what's what's going on? And he had a message today. I saw a screenshot and he was like, he was like, yeah, there's this place in the woods. Um, an old trader used to live there, but some freaking idiots are like crawling under the train and getting there. But don't worry, my guys are putting more mines out as we speak. And so everyone was like, oh, shoot, did they patch it? But apparently people are still getting out there. So um, and then, yeah, apparently that area like belongs to the BT BTR driver and we're going to like get quests from him. I don't know if he's going to be our new trader, but um, but it was just funny that it, he literally was like some freaking... <laughs> jokers are crawling under the train and getting there well, that's kind of funny interesting anyways so new woods area before we move on i do want to take a second to thank the second sponsor of the show this week and that is mando mando uh is here to help you smell good wherever on your body you smell bad they've got all sorts of stuff deodorant deodorant cream wipes soap it smells amazing, and uh, it's created by a doctor. It lasts up to 72 hours. Their scents are ele elevated scents, I would say. You know, not dude. I've talked. I've talked about the the bourbon leather before. Hmm. I just cracked open literally today the Mount Fuji deodorant. That's my yeah. That's... It smells like it smells like I, I don't know how to describe it. It's almost like fresh apples. Yeah, yeah. It's like yeah, like. It's just so good, and I literally was just reminded of it because here's the thing. I used to like, I used to wear, I mean, you know, yeah, I'm a 90s kid, okay, so I used to oh, with yeah, Kilo the, yeah, yeah, body yeah, spray, yeah. okay, until it blew up in my backpack that one day. Yeah. Um, but I don't, I, you know, I don't wear cologne or anything like that, but it's just so nice. You know, sometimes, like, some people like candles um, to, to be able to just, have a nice scent around yep. rather than just like normal gamer gunk basement yep. dweller. Yeah. And the, I literally was like stretching early and I was like, mm, my God, yeah. it's just, it's, it's like, it smells good and it's just enough to where yeah. it's like you have a, you have a scent actually now. Yeah. Right. They smell like emotions. They smell like feelings. You know what I mean? Like, it, you know, it, oh, it, yeah, you know, but you know what I mean? It doesn't smell like, you know, watermelon citrus explode. It smells like you close your eyes, you sniff it and you're on the top of a mountain. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're just like I'm an apple orchard. Yeah, the, it, the, it's yeah. crazy. Um, my, my thing about Mando, what I love is the like that they have every version of the thing. Like if you're a stick guy, you like rubbing the stick. That's me. They have that. They've got spray versions of their deodorants in all the same sense. They've got the squeeze bottle that's literally, I mean, all three of them, they call whole body deodorant. Whole body deodorant. Where you smell bad, put it. So if you don't want to be rubbing your stick in your giblets, you know, you can get the spray, you can get the the cream, but you can smell good everywhere. It's like a shower in a can. This this The scents are great, but then they have unscented. If you just want to not stink, maybe you like your own natural musk, but you don't want to stink. You can use unscented. They got body wash. They got the wet wipes, which you know everybody knows I'm I'm a big wet wipes guy. So I just think it's great. Created by a doctor who saw firsthand how a normal BO was misdiagnosed and mistreated. Clinically proven to block odor for up to 72 hours. They got all the different uh, products. They're all baking soda free and paraben free. Uh, it's pretty great. And with the starter pack, you get. Um, you get like, you can pick like one of a bunch of different stuff, which is freaking amazing. So uh, Mando starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube, two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash or the deodorant wipes and free shipping. 
And as a special offer for our listeners, new customers get $5 off the starter pack with our code, which equates to over 40% off your starter pack using code podcast at shopmando.com. S-H-O-P-M-A-N-D-O.com uh, and code podcast. You can support our show and tell them that we sent you smell fresher, stay drier, and boost your confidence from head to toe with Mando. Bada bing. Mm. Bada bing boom bow. Um, <clears throat> but yeah. So that's, I mean, nothing is happening in Tarkov except every day is a new like Jesse have you heard about the bug where it freaking files your taxes but does it under a different name so the IRS is going to audit you in six months and it's yeah, like oh no I haven't shit. seen that like it's just every day is the new thing um the only other like Tarkov related like conversation piece which actually segues into another game I played the other day is we're obviously at the point of the wipe where the perception is like dead raids raids are dead no one's here and we've had conversations before in the past about like, you know, what makes a what makes a dead raid, what makes a raid feel dead. <coughs> but I played Hunt Showdown the other day with Hambino. Have you ever played that? Yeah, I played a few times. I played that probably <laughs> like two years ago, two and a half years ago. And it was one of those games where I played it. I had fun. I think I played it with Deadly and Pep. And I was like, that's this is a cool game. It runs well. It's got great audio. I have absolutely zero desire to launch this game again. Like, it, it was just one of those. Yeah. It's not for me. Like, like I can't nothing. I can't even be critical about the game. What it set out to do, it seems to have done well. Just it's not scratching the itch. Not for me. Like, uh, but then the other day, Ham was like, yo, Hunt Showdown had this crazy big update. Like, it's feeling really good. I had fun. And I was like, sure, let's play it. And I like I, I kind of got it. I was like, or it, it, I don't know, it's, it started to scratch the itch. And it was so funny because as I was playing, it was like so many pieces of the puzzle were like coming together. And I was thinking about a bunch of different stuff. And I don't, I don't know if you saw, I tweeted, I was like, I played Hunt Showdown for two hours and now I think <clears throat> all suppressors in Tarkov should be 50 times rarer. Because it was just, there was something about, it, it was like the setting of Hunt Showdown means it's early wipe forever because it's 1869 there yeah. are no lpvos there are no there's very few suppressors there's like two pistols with suppressors on them it's always kind of a scrappy so combat. it's always scrappy combat almost all the guns are just iron sights it's like dually pistols with like mega bloom or whatever and it's like I played and their audio is fantastic. It's always been fantastic, right? Like insane. But I guess the timing of when I was playing it, like playing it when it's like pseudo late wipe, you know, I mm -hmm. all day me and him, you know, played and we were like running around raids looking for people and not being able to find anyone. And then you play this and it's like, you can hear gunshots from like six or 700 meters away. And you can tell the drop off on the sound is so natural so sounding that natural. you're like, oh, that's 800 meters. And they even have a, yes, th there's some feature, I forget if it's in the menu or in the it's office in the or whatever, menu, but yeah. where it's like, you can just scroll forward right up into a gun, scroll all the way back like a thousand meters and they, they'll be shooting and you can hear yep. every step of the way how it's it sounds. beautiful. <laughs> and so like, I... Like the it it was so fun. The world just feels alive, and you hear all these fights, and you're like deciding, like, ooh, I don't want to go for that because we have the thing, and I'm trying to get out, or I do want to go for that because we want PvP. And the fights were just like, man. And I don't want to sound like the old, you know, decroted boomer, like back in my day gamer, but man, it 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 there was just so much to it. Gigabeef did a video where he did some like cursory testing. He wasn't like, here's the cutoff. I've done science. He just did some cursory testing where he was like, around like, how, what do suppressors do? How do suppressors affect combat in Tarkov? And basically, he came up with like every single gun I tested, 100 meters is the cutoff point where uh, if you're at 101 meters, you don't hear audio, none. 
not suppressed audio. It's just a hard it's hard cap. He was like, some guns were at like 60 meters, like some of the smaller calibers with suppressors. But like, I, I think in his testing, don't quote me exactly. I, I haven't watched the video in a few weeks. But I think his testing was like 100 meters was like nothing. You can't hear any gun under any circumstance if it's suppressed at 100 meters away. And he made some interesting just points about like, how does that, you know, make a raid feel? Whereas in the beginning of the wipe, everybody is, you know, shooting loud guns versus the late wipe when almost everybody is running suppressed. Even if you're like a level 30, you're probably suppressing your gun. And so I was just, uh, I was just all of the things, all the conversations we've been having, we're just like, and me and playing Hunt Showdown, we're just like coalescing into, it's so interesting. Oh, the other thing about Hunt that makes the raids feel alive is like, it's. I don't know if you played in a while, but the way it works is like the whole point of Hunt is you go in and depending on the size of the map, there's either one or two bosses. You need to find yep. clues to find the boss. You need to defeat the boss, banish the boss, get his boss token and get out with it. That's how you progress. You can extract and that's like a whole thing that like people know like, oh shit, yes. someone's there. Yes, yeah. all, all that kind of stuff. But the point is every raid there's a goal and everyone has the same goal. And I am in no way saying that that's how Tarkov needs to function. But what I'm saying is when we talk about Tarkov feels like it's dead, there's no, like in the beginning of a wipe, the the Venn diagram of people's goals lines up a lot more. Everyone's trying to quest. And a lot of people are doing similar quests because it's yep. the beginning of the wipe. And so there's, you know, Loud guns, common goal, and the raids feel alive and active and stuff like that. Right now, I don't, like, there seems like everyone has their own goal, but the goals very rarely overlap. Where, like, one person might just be looting stashes. One person might be chasing PvP. One person might be have shown up late and he's doing the quest down at the pier on Shoreline or whatever. But... I'm only ever really running into people with the exact same goals I am, right? Like yep. if I'm SJ6ing the resort, I might run into one other squad that SJ6 to the resort, I want PvP, they want PvP. But if I win that fight, it feels like the raid is already over. And it's because if there's anyone on the map, I can't hear them because they're all suppressed. Mm -hmm. Not enough goals in Tarkov are common goals. Like I, I had told you before, one of the things I loved about Delta Force is in addition to everybody's individual quest lines where you could be anywhere, every time you start a raid, there's like five or six quests that spawn. And some of them are rare. And so we all might spawn and then 50% of us might go, ooh, that's the rare wall breach request. There's good loot there. I want to go there. And so I felt like Delta Force did a great job of like, here is your own story. Chart it. You can do your own quest. You don't have to do it. But here's some carrots at the end of the stick. That yeah, will yeah. bring people together. So it was like Hunt Showdown plus Tarkov was what Delta Force did. But in Tarkov, it's just like nobody has a common goal. You can't hear anybody else on the map. There's obviously less people playing towards the end of the wipe. Like that's undoubted. Uh, and then the other one is the spawns. I know we've had conversations about this before. I know you were saying like it's hard to do. I'm still, this is my, I'm a dog with a bone with this. I just like, there are certain maps where I am so positive the spawn logic is messed up. There have just been times recently where on Shoreline, which can house like a maximum of like 12 people, we spawn as a two-man. The closest spawn to our right is a three-man and the closest spawn to our left is a two-man. And it's like 50% of the players on the map are the three physically closest spawns to each other. And it's like, yeah. when we talk about raids feeling dead, if that happens on both sides of the map, where like immediately in the raid, there's a spawn fight. Then there's two people left. 30% of the players are dead. 20% yeah. of the players are 70 kilos and extracted. And there's me who just like got the lucky, not close to anybody else spawn. And I'm running around going, yo, this raid is dead. Like nobody's playing Tarkov. The body corpse pile. Exactly. And because those fights were suppressed, I didn't even hear them. So I'm running around an empty raid 
I or think, it's an empty raid and you don't know. And you don't know. There's, and that's what I'm saying. And so it's like I was playing hunt and it was just like all coming together where like undoubtedly there are less people playing Tarkov right now. But there was just something that never sat right with me when it, people were like, oh, the raids are so dead. Nobody's playing Tarkov. I was like, I don't think the drop off is that big. BSG released their thing. The, the, uh, almost a half a million people, almost 500,000 accounts accepted the zombie quest line. That doesn't mean everybody completed it, but that's a lot of people. And I have a hard time believing on Saturday night on NA servers, three days into the event, that Streets is dead. But that's what it felt like. And so I so I just like started piecing together. There's so many things that contribute to this. You can't hear people pass 100 meters away. 40% of players are in combat in less than six seconds, which means that half of them are dead and the other half want to leave. Nobody is trying to do the same thing anymore, so there's no real reason to run into somebody. The loot on most maps has been nerfed, so those were catalysts for PvP because everybody was wanted to go get the loot there. And so, the so like the I get it. I get the end result is like people run around and they don't find anyone. They don't hear anything. They don't hear any shots, and they go, "Damn, Tarkov is dead." And I was like, "Oh man." There's so much to that. Like, there's so many things that could be tweaked and adjusted. So, yeah, chances are it's somewhere in the middle where yeah. a bunch of people are over Tarkov. A bunch of people are into a bunch of games that just came out that, you know, or or, or there were updates, whether it's fucking Factorio yeah. or whether it's, you know, some other shooter or whatever, right? Some people are sick of the fucking zombie event and just stop oh, yeah. playing during yeah. that event. A million percent. So there are less players, which makes there. I'm sure there's a threshold, right? Where yeah. when you have a full raid, you can have spawn fights with the sound that people don't hear, all that stuff, yeah. and still have one encounter per raid that makes it feel not dead. Yeah. Because all you need is basically zero encounters, yeah. you know, zero to one yeah. for the game to feel dead. Yeah. Now, it, it literally could just be 20% of the player base is not playing anymore. Now your raids are 80%. So now yeah. it's 30 and 30 die in the beginning. Yeah. There's only 20% of, of people in a massive thing as opposed to double that yeah. on a massive map, which is enough to have one yeah. fight crossover because really all yeah. you're talking about conceptually when it comes to experiencing other players, it really is that visual where it's circles. Yeah. And do the circles overlap, whether it's spawns in 30 seconds yes. or whether it's whether it's your path throughout a raid yeah. in 20 minutes. If the Venn diagrams overlap, yeah. it's not a dead raid. Yes. If they don't, it isn't. And the moment you remove like two circles, well, now yes. it's, a, and so it's a coin. That's flip. actually such a great like I wish I had the like 3D modeling skills to make this <clears> as a visualization because that's a perfect visual visualization where like. If you've got a top-down view of a map, shoreline, and everyone spawns and you see the circles, seven of the 12 people that spawn in spawned with overlapping circles. So a fight just like immediately breaks out, right? And then you apply a filter and you go, oh, I forgot to, now there's, you know, four less people in the raid. Oh, I forgot to mention everyone has a suppressor. So the circle goes whoosh. Yep. And then you go, oh, it makes sense. There could be people everywhere. But you see the heat maps and you see these circles that are so small because everyone's running suppressed and everyone's got an LPVO. So you'd be like, well, wouldn't they fight scavs? Well, everybody knows where the scav spawns. So they just see the scav. They suppress one tap it and there's no fights break out. And so like that's a great visualization where spawn half the players are dead and the circles are so small and the maps are so big that you might not find anybody. But that yeah, doesn't there's, mean there's... that the raid is dead from a perspective of like nobody else spawned because that's my question where it's like I would be under the impression if I was just making this up, which I am, <laughs> that if there were a uh, 100,000 concurrent players or 50,000 concurrent players, raids in like well-populated areas like N.A., would feel relatively the same fullness because there would just be less raids. Right? Like, I feel like people, I feel like people look at it through the, 
there's a thousand shoreline raids right now in NA. And I feel like people look at it through the lens of if half as many people are playing Tarkov, I'm running into half as many people. And in my brain, it would go, oh, well, just matching might take 30 seconds longer. But like, I would assume the logic is just ship the raid with at least 70% full raid and at maximum 100% full raid. And the difference between 1,000 concurrent players and 100,000 concurrent players should be like a lot. But the difference between 50,000 and 100,000, I would imagine would be indistinguishable to the player. This is one of those things where... Well, I'm making this so, up, so I don't know. So there's... And of course, I'm making this up too. Uh, this is just kind of like a hunch when I see these patterns like this. It seems like there's one of those things where it's a continuum of inputs and outputs. Yeah. But it's not a continuum of experience. Yeah. So it's like, imagine... I'm just pulling this completely out of my ass. You're playing basketball and there's a hundred people on each team. It's like the court is packed. Yeah. 99 people. It's packed. 50 people. It's packed. 20 people. It's packed. Seven people. It's still kind of too many people. Six people. Yeah. Too many people. Five people. Oh, it feels good. Four people. There's not enough. Yeah. It's like, so you have this massive spectrum and at one point, it's like that. So if you have 12 people or 15 people in a <laughs> yeah. shoreline raid, that feels like a full raid. The moment you have yeah. eight or six or seven, now your chances of seeing someone else yeah. are like drastically cut. Because if you think about, let's just say yeah. you cut half the people die in For the sure. spawn, right? Sure. So there's 12. So now it's six and six. Well, now what are the chances that six people and six people, those circles are going to overlap Yeah. versus let's say you start with seven. Now you have three and four divided by two. Well, yeah. now it's one and three. Well, now those circles will not overlap for sure. So all it takes is a few less people. And you, so you also have to think about it's later in the white. So people are on different maps playing at different times. Less for people sure. are playing you know, I'm sure that there's like a heat map for in the beginning, everyone's yeah. on customs and woods. And then, you know, then the just distribution shifts yeah. to people are playing labs and streets yeah, 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 and, yeah. you know, whatever else. So a lot of things are going together to make it feel like at some point, suddenly everything feels dead. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing. My, my if it was unclear, my position is that raids are actually so much more packed than people think they are. But several game mechanics that slowly release themselves naturally over the course of the wipe make raids feel dead. Like my position is that like people who are like, nobody's playing this game. Every raid is dead. Is that that's probably not true. Like, I think that if no one had suppressors, but the exact same amount of people that were playing right now at the exact same amount of times, you would see, you would just be like, oh, there was somebody over there. Like, even if you didn't want to go over there, you'd be like, oh, somebody else is in this raid, right? You would kind of know that. You would hear scavs and people fighting scavs a lot more often. If there were some version of the Delta Force quests where, like, the people that do want to fight, because that's my question. How many times does a raid start and me and this duo and this other solo are in there for PvP, but just because of natural, like you said, we just don't, the circles never overlap. You know what I mean? If there was some Delta Force-y style, like, like, oh, this thing popped up. Like, what kind of what they wanted to do with airdrops, but airdrops, airdrops. are so bad, they're not worth <laughs> looting. But let's say airdrops were amazing, and there was one guaranteed was airdrop per raid. Yeah. Something like that. So, like, nobody being suppressed. That happening. So, that would mean the people, like, you know, once again, I always try to say I'm not because I want PVP. I'm not saying I want everybody to want PVP. Something like that, where like the airdrop coming down, in my opinion, is such a win win because it's perfect. If you are in there avoiding PVP, it's like a beacon of like PVP is going to happen here. And so you can be like, I want to go a different way. I'll do that quest next time. I'll do this quest this time. <laughs> and the people that want PVP go, ah the Lenex or whatever, like, I bet I'm going to fight somebody down there. So to me, that's a win-win as opposed to me just nonstop farming the resort 
And the one time you want to go do a quest at the resort, I'm there like dying for PVP. So I chase you down. So like, I think that like, and once again, I'm not saying suppressors should be deleted from the game. This is, I'm just like, I'm making an extreme to like kind of say where my brain is at. If suppressors were gone, if there was some sort of thing that was like allowed to be, you know, a PVP catalyst outside of just Kappa quests, and if the spawn logic was updated, that there were less fights in the sub 10 second realm. Like I'm totally fine getting into a fight 48 seconds into the raid because sometimes I just run straight at another guy or I run at a hot spot. But if the spawns were more spread out such that there weren't that many fights at the very beginning, I feel like with the exact same amount of people playing at the exact same amount of time, it would feel like a completely different game. The raids would feel alive. You would hear fights. If you wanted to push those fights, you could hear them and push them. If you wanted to avoid those fights, you could avoid them. There would be some sort of mutual um, goal that certain people would want to do in like a PvP event style thing. You would have a little bit room, more room to breathe and say, oh, I spawned here. I know a lot of times stuff can get hairy. I'm going to back up and go this way. Like, I think that there are game mechanics that could change that could make the raids that would reveal that there were way more people playing than a lot of people think are playing. Undoubtedly, you're right about like more people are playing different maps and more people are playing PvE now and there are less people playing that at the beginning of the wipe. I think all those things are a factor, but I still think that there are more people playing than a lot of people think are. I think there are more people in raids than a lot of people think are. So is your... I obviously have no information. I couldn't possibly <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm wondering, is is your theory, your hunch, your feeling, whatever you want to call it, is it based on, would you say it was Giga Beef's video? Is it based on like a plausible explanation for why it could be feel dead without being dead? Or is there, so like, because what you're saying is a, yeah. it's, almost an unfalsifiable kind of mm. hypothesis all you would need to do is be in a raid and be like this raid was dead 100 percent. i'm super convinced and then come across 10 bodies at a place yeah. you wouldn't look then you'd be like boom that just proved there were people in this raid that i didn't right yeah. so that's like the only way i can think is is to find a ton of bodies so that in a raid that you were convinced was dead to find the the rest of the players that happens enough times to make me think that when it does like so when I'm that exact thing has happened enough times that let's say there's a hundred raids that I didn't run into anybody and didn't run into any bodies there are enough raids where I don't run into anybody and then run into a bunch of bodies that if there are a hundred raids, I don't run into anybody and any bodies. I'm just doubting if I can call them dead now. Right. It's like now yeah. I'm like, well, maybe 50 of these, there's a body pile somewhere. You know what I mean? It's like, that's yep. kind of it. Like the amount of times recently, uh, I've been in the West wing of the resort looting, talking to chat, being like raids are dead. And then I run to the East wing of the resort and I find four dead bodies, all looted guy gone. And I go, oh, I feel like I wasn't that far away. Like, if I had heard this, I would have come over to fight. You know what I mean? And then I'm like, oh, yeah. shoot. And then I start thinking, if this cluster happened at spawn, I would have never stumbled across these bodies. If it happened by blue fence, I'm just going out the... I'm going out Red Rebel Extract. So I'm going out so close to the to my to where i'm looting that i i would you know it just makes me doubt the times i go so basically that's it Th this theory is out of it's not just the gigabeef thing it's all the things it's my personal experience of constantly running into like a giant body pile after what was seemingly a quote unquote dead raid it's seeing the gigabeef video and being like oh man they're genuinely i would have never been able to know if there were five different fights happening on this map as long as they were 101 meters away from me and then you know what i mean it's the it, it's the you know anytime there's like a new event or a new quest or something all these people show up and i'm like okay some of them definitely come back to check out the quest but i think some of these guys are here all the time it's just that now like whenever they add a new quest it's pvp central around that quest zone which goes back to the like common goal so it's like, yep. it's just the more I think about it, 
I definitely don't want to get into like what you said, the unfalsifi unfalsifiable thing where it's like, I think that there's 10 times as many people in the raid. It's just, I can't prove it. So like, I don't want to yeah. go too far into that realm. But what I'm saying is I just think it takes a little bit of critical thinking on all of these different things. Like when there's a common goal, people run into each other more. And so I'm not saying we should force a common goal on people, but adding something in the raid that could dynamically put people together, maybe that would help. If we heard farther than 100 meters away, maybe that would help. If the spawns weren't so, you know, I, so it's just like those things came together where I'm just starting to like, I just can't believe and then, like I said, I, I was not under the impression that, like, I was under the impression that it's hard to get a dead raid. Like, that we would just, the bus would just wait until there was, like, I think a lot of people think they get shipped alone into raids, a lot, like, 40% of the raids. Like, I think people think, like, I'm the only one in the shoreline raid, like, half the time. And I just intrinsically doubt that that's how the shipping of raids works <laughs> you know what i mean like i i remember back in the day back in the day the meta for lots of streamers yeah. who who their claim to fame were having you know billions and billions of rubles because they would yeah. you know farm dpus on interchange all day long or whatever. yeah yeah the meta was to go to different <laughs> time zones and yeah and like I'm f almost totally convinced that like, at least at the time and probably still now, yeah, the time zone populations are enough of a difference to where like there's a c configuration of time and place yeah, where there won't be many other players. And there For are sure. also, there, there were also times where I was like, 98% sure I was in like a factory raid and nobody was there. Yeah. Because I spawned in like forklift. Yeah. Instantly ran out like before the expansion. Yeah. None of the locked doors that needed like marked keys were unlocked. And if they went out gate three, they would have closed both doors behind them. Yeah. And I ran through the whole map and it was completely silent. And yeah. it's, so it's like maybe there was a five man that all just ran in like it's possible yeah. they were just doing rmt yeah. ran in whatever but yeah i mean i i don't know and i'm not There's saying so that... many explanations and they're probably all sometimes true sometimes yeah. for people sometimes and, but that's what i'm saying is like i'm not saying <laughs> that there aren't times where there's dead raids i'm not saying that there are it's not possible to be shipped in a raid alone i'm just saying that <clears> like <throat> it's fishy in my brain to, for the bar to be that low where I go, I ran from point A to point B to extract and I didn't see anyone, that raid is dead. Like, that's just too low of a bar. Like, my brain goes, yeah. there could be 70 other explanations and sometimes you might accidentally be right. You might not have seen someone and there was nobody else or maybe there was one other guy and they left. I'm just saying that's like, like, I feel like that's more unfalsifiable. It's like, well, I didn't see anybody, so... And the raid's already dead, so you can't prove me wrong. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, let's think critically about, like, what other things could have made you just running from point A to point B and then out appear to be a dead. So that's all I'm bringing to the table is what I'm bringing is an addition. It could be this and this and this and this and this. I can't change how many people are playing at any given time. Well, I can't change anything. But all I'm saying is, like, if we... If we Look in more than one place and find, oh, this and this and this and this. And these are very easy things from a game dev side to just like tweak and see like, you know, like let's do an event where there's no suppressors or whatever. And then if all of a sudden raids feel super alive, we can go, oh, maybe there were less dead raids than I thought. You know what I mean? Like, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, you bring up a really interesting game mechanic that would completely potentially enrich the experience, right? Like, yeah. There's there's tremendous value in that and and like it's that's commendable because what you're doing is responding in the best possible way to like let's not forget what we're talking about is the completely petty 
which side are you on? Yeah. Game is dead versus not dead game, which is like, yeah, the Patriots season is dead. You guys are never going to win. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's like people are emotionally and even streamers are emotionally invested yes. in a game being dead or not. If you're playing a dead game, you're a fucking loser. Yeah. The game is dead. They fucking failed. I'm so happy yeah. they failed. Yeah. The company's going out of business. The server, it's Concord. Like, it's that's what's at the heart of all this. And and you're not like taking the bait. Yeah. You're like, yeah, yeah, there's all this stuff, but let's extract fucking value yeah. as if, you know, this was a crude oil. I sorry, I can't go back. I, to that <laughs> I can't, I can't go back to my story. But like, this is like someone said it in chat and like, this, more than anything, more than cheaters, more than anything, is a reason I would love a replay system. Like a, like a, yeah. like Fortnite, where you can like download the raid. You know what I mean? Your, your match. People tell their friends where you were when they died. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'm saying after. Like, that would just like completely. No, remember that whole fucking oh, replay yeah, yeah. kill cam circle yeah, on the sure. picture I had on Twitter? Yes. That would completely like shut this down. Like, I would love that so much. To just like, like I ran shoreline all day and I drew a straight line from where I spawned to the resort and then out and I didn't see anyone game is dead. And it's like, well, let's pull up your raids, bro. And there's like people questing or getting into spawn fights and like, there's all this kind of stuff, but just not bum rushing the resort. And it's like, oh, or the other way, or it would be like <laughs> zero, like two people spawned and the this other guy left and you'd be totally right. I would you love see, like, bloop, that. Jesse, bloop, someone else spawn. You'd be like, all right, waiting for everyone else. And then, yeah, and it never happened. And, and, happened. Like, and that's so, the thing is like, I have no skin in this game. Like exactly what you said is all I'm saying is that like correlation doesn't equal causation. I don't know if that's a, all I'm saying is like the lowest hanging fruit isn't all like all I'm saying is we should attempt to think about like other reasons why it could appear this way. And just like add them to the bag. I'm not saying dead raids don't exist. I don't have any like skin in this game. Like I'm just saying it doesn't take that much critical thinking to be like, oh, there's other things. And maybe these things could be changed. And those things like someone brought it up earlier. What? The zombie event, the pistol zombies were annoying as hell. But what was interesting is you heard gunshots all raid. Yeah. Even if they weren't at you because they were at them. And you were like, oh, and now you could make the argument, well, there were more people playing because of the zombie event. And maybe that's true. But I still think it's like, oh, interesting. When a bunch of unsuppressed entities enter the map and they're shooting at all these players, all this this raid that I would have been like, there's a dead raid. But I was like, oh, I heard them fighting over there. I heard them fighting over there. Just interesting. So what I'm so proud of you because what you're doing is, is the application of skepticism. Yeah. In critical thinking to claims. People make a claim, and this is why I literally tweeted this the like the other day. I tweeted, this is why I'm consistently seemingly in opposition to quote-unquote everyone. Yeah. Why some believe I'm always just quote-unquote disagreeing for the sake of it. I built my worldview as a philosophical scientific skeptic on an yeah. acute awareness of this exact phenomenon, and I linked uh, one of the latest Veritasium videos. Yes. Did you see that yeah, video by yeah, any yeah, chance? Yeah. Um, the, the video basically said smart people are smart until the thing that they're, um, basically like confronted with goes against their like worldview, yes. like political worldview. And then they become stupid and reject the data and evidence. Um, knowing that whenever I hear a claim, I'm I'm programmed to instantly think what's what's another explanation? Yeah. Because people jump to conclusions. Yeah. Usually based on emotion or based on whatever, right? The like, think about it. Is the first answer, the first solution you come up with for any yeah. given problem the best one? Yeah. The most likely to be right? I would say no. Maybe the second try yeah. or the like the third try you're more likely to be honing in at the truth. Yeah. You're throwing fucking darts, you know? Yeah. And every now and then, you know, when the dart hits, you get to see like, oh, the dartboard's over there. Yeah. Okay. And then you can throw it yeah. and it starts to get closer and closer. So yeah, anytime somebody says anything, yeah. what I think it's very healthy and it's super important, literally everyday yeah. life and everywhere, everything, everywhere, all, all over the all place. All at once, yeah. Yeah, all at once uh, to... 
just think like someone made a claim. Yeah. What if they're wrong? And what could the alternative explanation be? And what's the evidence for it? Because yeah. anecdotes, the plural of anecdote is not evidence. You don't just get a bunch of people that are yeah. all saying, I experienced a thing, and then that's evidence of the thing. Yeah. yeah. You need evidence. 100%. So, so yeah, like, I, uh, <clears throat> so, and, and this isn't a thing where like there's drama in the community. This isn't like the cheater thing where like they added the, you know, viewing, um, they added the viewing the player stats and now all of a sudden people are like, oh, it's under 300 hours. Like this isn't a thing where there's like resistance where I argue with people in chat and there's drama in the community. This is more just like an observation where like, man, the sentiment is Tarkov is dead. Like it's much, which, which is not even a new sentiment, right? Like, you know, since 2016, at the end of the wipe, the sentiment is always Tarkov's dead. And I'm in no way saying there aren't less people playing than there was at the beginning of wipe. But I just played Hunt Showdown, which is a game with a bunch of maps and a solo queue and a duo queue and a quad queue. So three different queues, a bunch of maps. It's set up very same instance raids, 8,000 concurrent players. I bet my house there are more than 8,000 concurrent players in Tarkov right now, and every Hunt Showdown raid felt infinitely more alive and populated. So this isn't like I'm beefing with anybody. It's just I've been thinking about this sentiment of raids are dead, and I've been thinking about mechanics that could explain that. And I'm just trying to put them together and be like, hey, maybe there's more people than we think. You know, maybe there's 75% of the raid, like the raids are 75% full as opposed to 100% full at the beginning of wipe. So maybe there is less people, but maybe all those people have suppressors, meaning you can't hear anybody. All those people have different goals now, which means they're going different directions. All those people, like, I'm just like, hmm, you know what I mean? That's all I'm saying is. Now you're thinking with portals, my friend. <laughs> and I am, do you get that reference? No. Sorry. God damn it, God damn it Jesse. Did you ever play Portal? No. Don't. I know what it is. You piece of shit. <laughs> I was so proud of you, and now I'm ashamed. <laughs> the whole the whole idea of thinking with portals. Okay, now I have to explain the fucking meme to Jesse. Okay, like I'm like I'm explaining fucking skibbity toilet to my dad, and I don't even know what skibbity toilet is. That's like yes. you trying to explain yeah, skibbity, skibbity toilet, toilet to, me. to you. Um, is. When you play Portal, right? Have you? Do you know? Yes. yes, 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 yes. So you get the Portal gun, and you shoot the Portal. And first, you learn that like the orange Portal, yeah, you know, makes like a hole. And then the blue Portal, you left and right click, and then it's yeah. like, oh, you've just now connected those yeah. holes. That's like, cool, right? Because now you can just like get on the other side of the wall, yeah, by shooting through this little hole that you couldn't fit through normally, but you just shoot a hole, shoot a hole. But then, like, eventually, you start to learn momentum is conserved yeah 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 going through the portals and other things so then it's like then you put a portal in in the floor and then like a portal like on the wall behind you and, and the floor is like 30 feet yeah. down and you jump into the hole and you go <laughs> out so now you just thought with portals. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're, you're taking this concept and you're thinking about things totally, a paradigm yeah. shift. You're allowing something to change the way you think yep. about problem you are, solving you or whatever. Are Thomas Kuhn, the, stru what is it, the structure of scientific revolution, I think. Uh, I think that's the name of the book. He's the one that coined the term paradigm shift. Thomas ah. Kuhn, K-U-H-N. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're I'm thinking, you're with thinking about now, yeah. You're thinking about things on a totally different fucking level now. Everyone is sitting here yeah. playing Half Life without the portal gun, and you you you've unlocked the fucking portal gun, and you're looking at all these mere mortals like, what are you doing? Mere mortals. Yeah. So that's Jesse's rant. Yeah, on raids, hunt showdown, suppressors spawn points i I'm, i have no pool with bsg i'm not going to make a video about this i just think that like i i and, and i guess the way to put it is like 
if we don't like if everyone thinks the problem is this like player count is an unfixable not unfixable but but it's like a it's like a like a not restless but it's like a problem it's such an ethereal problem it's like i have no control over player count like oh like you just can't just make more players playing the game and yeah. so it's it's like man the, it's like a defeating thing like oh tark like the raids are so dead man i just want to play i just want to have fun but if we shift and be like oh well if suppressors were this and maybe if the spawn logic was a little bit better and this with the exact same amount of players with 8,000 players in Hunt Showdown, that's, that shit feels alive. It's like, oh man, it's like, are we getting an experience less than we could be getting even with the player count that it is because we're not looking in the right direction to be like, oh, well, this these might be reasons that raids feel dead. So that's kind of where that came yeah. from. That's my little rant about that. Okay, so past all of that, there's been some other... It's, it's definitely like a famine going into feast situation. So Tarkov has been, you know, it. I played a little bit of Hunt Showdown. That was cool. Today we got a uh, dev stream from Delta Force, which I'm very excited for. And I didn't get to watch all of it. I saw some clips and I saw some pieces. But um, the two... Two of my three biggest concerns were directly addressed. One was, I told you about the bot, like the AI PMCs, like the AI mm -hmm. players. <laughs> and in general, people weren't too super happy with that. They, uh, they were like, boom, no bots, no, no PMC bots. Like every player in your raids is going to be a real person, uh, <clears throat> which makes sense because it's free to play and it's officially launching. So there's going to be so many more players in the play test, but that's yeah, yeah. awesome. I think they might do like in their other mode, the battlefield mode, they added a playlist where you can play with the bots and other players. If that's your jam, which I thought was kind of a good idea. Cause like four people that maybe aren't as sweaty or newer to the game. And I think they might do something similar for like lower levels, but the good thing is no bots. That's great. And they're quadrupling down on no pay to win they like made a whole tweet about it they're like you will never be able to buy currency any they didn't just say the currency they said any of the in-game currencies you won't ever be able to buy they said we will have microtransactions they will be all purely cosmetic they like five I'm times doubled down on this so that's good I'm still up. Listen. We'll believe it when I see it. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I'm still telling people. Like we'll see. But it, yeah. To me, this it's one of those. I'm like the. I'm the girl that's had too many boys that that have said they were going to be faithful yeah. and then cheated. Yeah, I get it. Now I'm with you know another another one and they're saying i promise i'm going to be faithful uh-huh i get it we'll take it one day at a time and i'm telling you that like everybody that comes in my chat and says that i'm like you should feel that way like it doesn't mean that i'm not going to celebrate that the fact that at least public facing they're saying they're not going to do it but like you should feel on guard you know what i mean i too i'm like you know Let's give it a it's few. Better that they say it exactly. that they don't. Exactly. But it doesn't I mean but it doesn't mean But that. it doesn't mean it's just it's just a good like base all we can take this as is a good sign. Anything yeah. can happen. It could go not pay to win at all and a year from now they don't have the player numbers they want and they flip that switch, bro. You know what I mean? It's like you never know. But it, at the, the very least edition could come out and at then... the very least it's a good sign. Um <clears throat> that they're not going pay to win. I think that like we've said before that like Tarkov could make a billion dollars selling cosmetics, like purely cosmetics, no pay to win, but they don't right. Obviously outside of the unheard stuff, which is the cultist jacket. And then you have stuff like arena breakout, which is full pay to win. You can buy currency and the flea market means you can buy any thing on the market. Like you can just buy gear. We have yet to like, have an extraction shooter that slides in the middle and goes, hey, we are going to make it free. We are trying to make money off of cosmetics, but we're not going to do pay to win. Like, I'd be interested to see if they just crush it as a result where 
yeah people like that it's not pay to win and the way the human brain works is if you put a freaking anime uwu skin people are gonna buy it you know what i mean like everybody memes on call of duty but they probably sold a billion dollars worth of Nicki minaj skins like it's i wonder how many how many fucking how much money valorant made from the skins it comes every time a new skin i'm like i'm dropping money to yeah. fucking buy it so it'll be interesting to see something slot in the middle and see how successful yeah. it is. It could be not successful at all. I mean, at the end of the day, the game has to be fun enough for people to play it to then want to invest in, in, you know, buying skins. But um, it'll be interesting to see that happen. But that was good. <laughs> the only thing that wasn't like directly addressed was my feelings on we talked a little bit about like the ballistic system and how armor just like doesn't seem worth using. It's just like buy good ammo. So but they did mention tons of stuff about like balancing and community feedback. It seems as though they did one of these dev streams about the battlefield mode last week. Mm -hmm. And then they did a dev stream today about the extraction style mode. And it seems like they're like giga listening to players like a lot. I watch a few content creators that are like battlefield guys. Uh, and I've watched all their videos about their takes on the battlefield mode. And it seems like a lot of the community feedback they listen to a lot of the community feedback in the extraction mode they listen to so that's another once again not like surefire thing but another really good sign that they've done all these beta tests and alpha tests and like listens to the feedback from the community that's been really cool so i'm i'm feeling good about it it comes out december 5th and uh i'm excited they're adding new like a few new maps and they committed to uh, basically it's like seasonal. So there's going to be an update every three months with like new maps or new content. They show like a raid in the extraction mode. I don't know how that works, but they show like a teaser for like a raid. Hmm. And then they said once a year, there will be like huge, like a huge update. Now this is crazy. This is funny because of kind of like the meme in Tarkov all these years. This came out of left field. I don't even know if I want this. I think I kind of do. They said they were like, every year we're going to do one huge update. Like, for instance, next year's, we're trying to turn all of the maps and put them together into an open world. And I was like, what? And it's funny because that's like what Tarkov said they were going to do for so long. So I have no idea how that works or What's, how that's going to work. I mean, if that's something that you plan for from the beginning, it's, I don't want to say trivial to do. Oh, yeah. But, I know, think they can do like it. It's like when when you know you yeah. want to have an in-law apartment in your basement, so you build your house and you already frame in the plumbing for the bathroom and all this stuff, it's just so much easier to do, right? If you built your house and you don't have a basement. Yeah. And, and now you, you want go... an in-law apartment, you need a new house, yeah. right? Yeah, that's a great, that's a great analogy. And that's what I'm saying. I actually believe they can do it. It just came so out of left field where I was like, oh, man, I, I wanted that in Tarkov for so long. And I let that dream die. And then I just the wheel started spinning. I was like, what would Delta Force feel like with an open world? Would that be the only lobby? Would they keep all the instance maps? But then you could also play the open world. Like I just started spiraling because I was like, oh, shoot. So the devs seem like really cool. The two that were did the, the interview today or like the thing, they seem really cool. So I am pumped now if you're a listener or if you're in my chat don't mistake this pumped for like it's gonna be perfect the devs are never gonna fail like it's just a game that i like that they seem to be making a lot of good decisions they can make it pay to win i'm pretty sure they're gonna charge for secure containers and say that that's not you know buying currency because that's the thing they keep saying no pay to win you can't buy currency which means they're undoubtedly gonna sell secure containers just like Gray Zone did, just like Tarkov did, just like Arena Breakout did. So I'm not saying you have to like it. I'm not saying it's going to be a perfect game and they're not going to make any mistakes, but they seem to be dishing out W's currently. And that's exciting. And so we have Stalker 2 coming out next week, which I'm excited for. We have Gray Zone Warfare just announced their next big update. Their Night Ops update is like coming out later this month. Um, Arena Breakout's got their season one content coming out and Delta Force comes out on the fifth and then 
the Tarkov wipe that we talked about like last week or two weeks ago is coming out at the end of December. So we're going from famine to feast and there's like a ton of stuff I'm excited to play over the next few weeks. You know, you know what I'm excited for? What? Tomorrow. The fucking... Was it Jake Paul? Ron Is Paul? that tomorrow? <laughs> Rand Paul? Honestly, I'd rather see Ron Paul and Jake Paul. Is the fight. Mike Tyson, Jake Paul event fight tomorrow? It's on Netflix, tomorrow. right? I, I don't know whatever it is I'm paying the money for it I think. Oh my um, god! Oh I, it's, yeah, it's, it's gonna be Netflix, but it's gonna be pay per view, isn't it? Maybe I don't know. I'm fine with this. I don't give a fuck. Uh, I it's so funny the the folks on the internet are completely split. It seems like really I don't know. I don't. I I won't say split fifty fifty. But like, people are seem to be so confident that, like, Mike Tyson just being a legend, you know, one of the goats. Yeah. You know, punching like a fucking literal freight train, and having the experience and whatever is is just gonna completely demolish mm -hmm. Jake Paul. Um, but. Then you have other people who are like, he's going to get completely demolished by mm -hmm. Jake Paul because he's so old and or out of shape and or, you know, whatever. Right. And yep. all I can say is I, I have my uh, my. If I had to bet. Yeah. I would just have to say Tyson just because it's like a somewhat of a, a known yeah constant that to me is i mean not that not that jake paul hasn't like boxed but because because he has mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. um and he's clearly like talented uh yeah but i don't know it's just like i it's just tyson right it's, like i'm i'm the guy i'm gonna be the guy i hate which is to just fabricate something and then believe it to be true I just don't think I can believe the fight, no matter what happens. A, like, I, oh, what you th you think it'll like they'll throw or, or uh, yeah, that's... I think I think too much money's on the line. I think a guy like Jake Paul, his entire brain is hardwired for content. Like, if he's gonna lose, it has to be content. If he's gonna win, it has to be content. Like, I just don't trust the integrity of like. I want to see those guys in a back alley with some gloves on and no cameras. But, but obviously, if that happened, I wouldn't see it because I needed to be on Netflix to see it. But I just like, I just, in my well, so what gut, it tells me it's not going to be, especially like, here's, here's where I know I can be self-aware enough to call out the hypocrisy in myself. If Jake wins, I just won't trust it. I can't defend see, I'm that. I'm the opposite. I can't defend that, opposite. but I just won't trust it. <laughs> See, I, I'm, I'm the opposite in that I don't think that Mike Tyson would throw. I think Jake would throw. Yeah. Like, like okay. And now maybe I'm just falling for the grift. Maybe he, you know, like, but, but why would they do it unless they were betting? Like, unless it was literally like they were betting side betting for against themselves yeah. like for money or whatever right but i don't know man like when i when i see mike tyson he said he said uh he, there was an interview and again maybe i'm just falling for the fake salesman yeah. whatever I, I choose to believe that he's being genuine I, I I obviously can't know. And I feel like I'm falling for internet hysteria where it's like, yeah, there's it's <clears> fixed. <throat> like, I feel like I'm falling for, if I'm falling for something, it's the opposite of what you're falling for, where I'm just like, it, yeah, it's all fake, man. But I do feel that deep in my gut. I can't deny it, even though I can't I, defend it at all. So Tyson had an interview and one of the guys asked him like, oh, you know, your kids were here and they saw you training. You know, like, what do you, how do you feel about that? And he said, Basically, like my kids think I'm a nobody, you know. Oh, like, damn. But after this fight, I'm gonna show them that I'm somebody. Yeah. And it's like, 
how can you say that and then throw? Yeah. Listen, I, I just like. I mean, you you can if you can just say whatever, but yeah. I don't know. I I feel like that would be throwing away a legacy. Yeah. Mike Tyson's got infinite money. Would you ruin your entire life's legacy? It, it would be forgotten if yeah. he gets beaten by this clown. No, you're I, you're so right. Once again, I am in a defenseless position. I what I hope is that the fight doesn't look fixed. Like no, like because that'll make it fun is like whoever wins. I hope it's like they're like, I hope it's just like a fight. The last round. Yeah, fight. dude. I hope it's not like, you know, Jake Paul's shoe was untied and on a technicality Tyson wins. You know what I mean? It's like, ugh, like, I hope they fight. I'm going to call it right now. Tyson is going to be Jake Paul's going to get in a couple of hits, right? Tyson's going to like almost fucking kill him. Yeah. And they're gonna call the fight. Yeah, see that I would hate that. Like, so like the, the, the referee much. jumps in and is like, no, no, no. And then Jake Paul does a whole like, oh, I could fight. Exactly. You know, and then it's like we gotta wait another Isn't nine months. Isn't that exactly for what happened to the Floyd Mayweather? Who fought Mayweather? Oh, Conor McGregor. And that's yeah. like exactly that fight was hyped up for seven years and it ended with nobody on the floor. That is unacceptable to me. Like someone, this is boxing. This is the like. This is the gladiator arena. This fight but, has but to end with it. somebody on the floor. If you're the if you're the ref though, like you you have to think about this again. I am I am the naive person that will die on a hill when every I'm the last person to die on a hill. I shouldn't have died on, but <laughs> you know, on principle, whatever. Yeah. I ha I have to choose. I have to believe until I have evidence. I have to believe that people are genuine and they're going to do what they say. Yeah. And they and they say what they mean. If it's just a random miscellaneous person. So if you're a referee, imagine Jake Paul dies. Yeah. Literally, he dies. You didn't call the fight. That's like like you, your career is over. Like, For you sure. know what I mean? So you have like this responsibility, and that's where you kind of sometimes jump the line. Oh. Yeah, right. Especially and you have to you're wrestling call a fight. Two ginormously famous people. Like, I get it. But like, I just hope like if if I hope it if it gets called Mike, he's just like I'm old, boom socks the judge, boom sock, KOs them both, bro. Lights the judges. Imagine ear. the Dude, drama. I, what I want, what I want is an is a second round knockout. Okay, the the yeah. dream fight. Yeah. The worst case scenario is it gets like three rounds in and they call it when. It was like a bad flurry, but he could have recovered maybe, yep. right? Yep. So it's like this whole thing, like it was stolen from me and whatever, yep. right? Um, what I want is the first round, Tyson completely, like you can tell, oh, we're on different levels. Jake Paul is getting absolutely fucking rocked. Yep. Doesn't get knocked out. And then ding, 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 round two goes to start. And you can tell he's like... Oh shit! Funk. And then fucking bah, 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 yeah, and then dude. he's just down for the count, and it's like that is that's yeah, you know, I want the like a mic drop. I want like one clean, holy shit! I've never been punched by a guy like Mike Tyson moment. Like even if it's not the KO shot, I want one Twitter clip where like it's like boom, boom, Jake goes in and Mike goes pop. And just, I want to see the life leave his eyes and be like, oh, fuck, dude. <laughs> I messed up. Oh, yeah, dude. I See, I here's the thing. If there's one thing I'll say is that the number of times Mike Tyson has been punched in the face by someone like Jake Paul or better yes. is, has to be astronomically thousands and thousands, higher. you know it has to be right the number of times jake paul has been hit by someone now granted i admit i haven't really followed i watched like a couple of clips yeah right? yeah but i have to i have to guess the number of times jake paul has been hit by someone 80 percent of mike tyson in his prime yeah has to be zero yeah so <laughs> yeah. that's that's what i'm going off yeah, of and the yeah. fact that like That's the known. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's it's a lot more difficult to, for Jake it, Paul to knock out Mike Tyson, I think. It definitely, like, 
Um, it's definitely a surprising and interesting position to for Jake to put himself in because like he knows the internet. He knows if he wins he won't have convinced a single hater because they'll go, you beat up an old man. And he knows if he loses, an old man beat him up. So like that to me is Ooh, part see, of the like, that to me is part of the like integrity thing where it's like, I feel like he's going into it knowing it's content. And so he'll do whatever. Like I, he's down for whatever. Yeah. What? Like, because there's no way if he wins, everyone's going to be like, hey, you beat up an old man. Of course, his followers are going to be like, he beat Mike Tyson, but no hater See, will be convinced. That, that, that's, that's the way, I, honestly, like I would be really surprised and impressed. I, I, It's possible that he could beat Mike Tyson. I would still be impressed if he beat Mike Tyson because I think about For sure. Jake Paul is a clown that has achieved yeah. whatever in life it's a different it's a different category of things that I may or may not have respect for, yeah. you know, whatever. But then I think about me in the ring with Mike Tyson. <laughs> yeah. And and I and I think I could not take his weakest no. off kilter no. accidental falling over jab. Yeah. So like I have to have respect for obviously like where he is and how competent for he sure. has become doing what he's done. And obviously yeah. I'm sure he's like kicked his ass, um, but, or he's busted his ass, not kicked his ass. For sure. But, he, but this... the, the way that I see this though is he's a fucking legend. If he wins, I'm going to be like, wow, that's incredible. I'd feel really cringeworthily bad for Mike Tyson and that like he kind of tainted his fucking yeah. like legacy. legacy. Yeah. And if he loses, it's so funny. I see it totally different. If he wins, it's incredible. If he loses, it's like I expected it. He can almost walk away without. It's not that you lost to an old man. It's that you lost to one of the greatest boxers of all time. We all expected it. It's still impressive. You did it. So it's a win win for him, in my opinion. Yeah. And everything, like Mike Tyson's, in my opinion, he's an idiot for doing, well, maybe not. Maybe the money is. Yeah, maybe he's know. broken. He's I, don't money. I, I don't know, it, dude. It, I don't know. It's so funny because I hear what you said and I go, that's an extremely valid, like, I get how you got there, but I'm just on the other side where I'm like, yeah. you're either beating up an old man or getting beat up by an old man. Neither one's well, impressive. We're all going to be disappointed. Nothing. We can't, I know, no, we can't have good things. That's what I'm saying. It's I just be... want it to be, I just want it to be like, that's the thing is like, my Mike Tyson's going to fail a drug test tomorrow morning yeah. and and it's like my defenseless position which is that like it's rigged whatever would be that it's all in the name of content the worst thing that could happen is it's not good content like if the fight's not fun to watch nobody wins the people that think it's real don't win the people that think it's rigged don't win nobody like it's like if it's just exactly that if it's like a Oh, hit, 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 you know, stumble. Oh, 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 we called it. We called it. Everyone's just going to be like, bro, come on. Yeah. And the sad thing there is that like all the money's still made. Yes. Yes, exactly. I was thinking, and that's the thing. Maybe I'm burned by, like I went over, like I got hyped up. My friends hyped me up. I got, I went over to my friends because we had this huge party for the Mayweather Conor McGregor fight. And it was like, I remember walking away thinking that I was like, they made the exact same amount of money as if that went eight more rounds. They saved both of their faces, right? Like n neither one got hurt too bad. And this was a lame ass party. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? It was, and I just remember being like, damn, that sucks. So yeah, I don't know. I just hope it's an entertaining fight. No matter what you think about it. I hope it's an entertaining fight. I hope the clips go crazy. What time is it? I gotta figure out like, yeah, I don't actually know what time it starts. Anyways, <laughs> a little bit of a longer episode to make up for the lack of, I was going to say the lack of pee-pee this week, but the lack of Patreon episode this week. There's never a lack of pee-pee. There's no, <laughs> I see, I knew where it was going. Um. Anyways, 8 p.m. EST. Is that when the card starts or is that when their fight is? Because isn't there like 87 oh, other fighters? I've never seen a boxing match from start to finish, I only ever watch knockout highlights because yeah. everything else is fucking boring. Yeah, fair. <laughs> Anyways, 
Thank you guys for hanging. Thank you for being with us. Thank you to Mando. Thank you to MeUndies for sponsoring the episode. Thank you to you guys. Um, we appreciate it. If you want more content like this, you can head over to patreon.com slash the podcast pod. Join the Patreon. Get early ad-free access to these episodes. An additional episode every week. You guys are the best. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. And we will definitely see y'all on the next. Peace.